went and visited a number of Chinese think tanks to try to gain the pulse of, uh, of Chinese views of North Korea. Uh, a lot of the people that we talk to have input and uh, visibility and situational awareness of the Chinese policy making toward North Korea. A couple of years ago when I was in China, in Beijing, it was that uh, political stability was the, the major issue. The, the feeling was that if North Korea had a near-term succession, uh, meaning that Kim were to die and there, there was going to be a succession, that was probably the greatest threat to stability in North Korea. Uh, now the feeling, at least that we got from many of the people that we talked to, was that it was not so much political instability as economic stability. The book, which is called North Korea Under Kim Jong-il, Power, Politics, and Prospects for Change, uh, is an examination of North Korean leadership politics from 1994 when Kim Jong-il succeeded his father Kim Il-sung to the present. And it essentially looks at the leadership dynamics in the country as it has unfolded during the, the period of the 90s, which was called the, the period of the arduous march or you know, the time of troubles that they had with the, econo the economy, the tenuous, uh, the attempts at economic reform in the early 2000s, uh, the attempts to put the, the market back in, into the box, which really began around 2005 period. And all, uh, it also discusses issues of the currency uh, revaluation uh, that took place, as well as the sinking of the Chen'an, all leading up to the, uh, the third party conference uh, that happened in September of 2010 last year. And that's where the book ends and, and then concludes with a chapter that looks at the kind of prospects for the future and a lot of the challenges that the, the North Korean leadership will be facing as we go forward and eventually toward the uh, hereditary succession that uh, will probably be taking place in the next few years.